If you are visiting Taipei for a short trip, you are definitely wondering which is the best night market to go. We visited five night markets and we'll tell you what we like and dislike about each of them and which is the best night market in Taipei. So on day one, we visited Rao He Night Market, which is near the river. So we heard that this is one of the most traditional and authentic night market in Taipei. So we are super excited to visit. They say that this is like one of the best night market in Taipei. So this is really like quite a typical traditional night market in Taipei where there's like food stores on the streets at the two sides. And immediately we went to eat the oyster which is the orchian and I saw the stinky tofu for the store and it was really good. And next, uh, in the middle of the cold blowing wind, uh, we ate this flamed beef cooked by this very nice man who had a good talk with us. And then seeing when you get papaya meal. It's my favorite! Yeah, and then we went to get lala, which are clams, and they were big and juicy. It's just the only regret we have was not to order more and order a bigger version. So we got the original flavor. So one thing you can do is uh, that the seller told the person after us that you can actually order a full wine flavor. <laughs> and we played some night market games. Um, my favorite, the shooting games, which I think is a good value because they give you more shots for the same amount of price. However, the one here, the pistol was not really maintained very well. But we won a bun bee! Yay, I'm so happy. I have never won anything at like night market games before and I'm so amazed. And I bet we played another shooting game, but this game I didn't really know how to play properly. So we didn't win anything. But we we went to play a dart game with this really friendly storekeeper and even we didn't win anything, she gave us a That's free consolation for, prize. Which is super cute also, look at it. So the pros of Rao He for me is that the food is really good and to me that's it has a lot more of the traditional night market kind of vibe. And the cons is that it's kind of in the middle of nowhere, so it's really in the east of Taipei and there's not much to do nearby. Yeah, and the night market closed so early. Okay, so we got chased out. <laughs> I mean, we are not done in the night market, but the night market is clearly done with us. Yeah, and we were trapped because there were no more public transport to go. <laughs> the MRT, I think, has stopped. So now we're looking at the U bikes. So because this was day one, we didn't have our phone numbers and then we thought we didn't have uh, Uber. So we were kind of trapped in the middle of nowhere. A tip especially for Singaporeans, if you had Uber in the past and you had to reactivate your account, you can actually get your reactivation code by WhatsApp and that's what saved us tonight. Day 2, Ningxia So on day 2, we went to Ningxia Night Market and I saw on Google that this is like one of the most popular night market in Taipei so we decided to give it a visit but it was so crowded. There's like a huge variety of food and there's this even this pink in the middle of everything. But anyway, we heard that the food stores are like one of the best in Taipei night markets but then we didn't really try it because the crowd was honestly such a big turn off. Uh, just queuing for the stores, you get pushed around and uh, you have to stand in the middle of the crowd to order. But there's lots of like tables that you can sit down and eat. So we end up eating this fried ice cream and this fried milk. The fried ice cream was really good but the fried milk was a little bit of a disappointment because seeing what I ate it since the first day. Yeah, which closed on me. So I was really excited to try it but actually it was not as nice as expected. Then we tried this IU drink. Which is damn nice! It's like a very refreshing drink. So, I think Ningxia is very interesting. It's kind of like the open air night market concept. They even have plugs and water sources for the stores and drains. And the games are all in one corner and there's like a few of each games, if not just one of each game. Um, there's not much interaction I feel, so playing the game here is a lot like the shopkeeper will take your money, you play the game, you take your price and go. I don't really blame them because there's so many people there. And we managed to win a little bear. Yay! And then we played this like fun-ish ping pong game, I guess. So we want a bubble and we wanted to bring it for our hiking trip. But we forgot to use it. So I think the pros to me for Ningxia is that there's a huge variety of food although we personally didn't really try it because we didn't really want to queue and be involved with the crowd. And we came from Shangying Shui Chan. Yeah, which we really ate quite a bit for. So when we came to Ningxia, we didn't really have the vibes to eat much. And the cons is that the queues are really long. Yeah, I would say it's a bit too crowded for my liking such that like I cannot enjoy the night market properly. So if you don't really like crowds, I wouldn't really recommend this night market. And overall, it wasn't the best experience for us. Day 3. So on day 3, we hit Shilin Night Market. So this is, I think, the 
OG night market of Taipei. So we heard that this is like the biggest and most popular night market of Taipei. It was so popular that they decided to build a shelter over it. There's one entire level on the first floor which is just devoted to activities and the entire basement is just food. Although I would agree with what we read online which is it kind of feels like a food court. It's still the biggest night market and there's still alleyways behind the main area with stores that feels more like a night market kind of vibe. And there's an entire level for activities and this is where Shilin really shines for me. So I played a duck shooting game and I think it requires a lot of skill, more skill than I had. So we didn't win anything here. Although we got a consolation. Okay, this is cute also. The consolation prizes at Taipei is really yeah. good actually. And then a huge shout out to this store which is called Guns and Soul. So if you love airsoft, you definitely have to check out this store. There are different categories. So there's sniping, there is speed shooting and there's also like a random game of chance. And also you can choose any of the guns on display. Just tell the boss which one you want to try. And they even have competitions that run all the time for you to win prizes for the fastest shooter. Just say he spent like $1,000 here and we spent like over 2 hours here. And we won banana duck. We tried the more traditional night market shooting game. Oh my god, and he like won at this archery game. The balloon didn't pop, he just fell, but anyway, we won this. <laughs> and I convinced Singh to play this ball throwing game, and she was really good at it. She only really took five games to win the prize. <laughs> I don't know if it's five, but it was many. <laughs> and here we won <laughs> Singh's favorite toy of the tree. It was Fred Cat. Okay, um. And there's even magic performances here. We didn't really get the food within the Shilin night market itself because we are not really interested in this food court-ish looking area. But there's still a sizable outdoors night market street where it's more traditional. So we ate this Da Chang Bao Xiao Chang. This is like the best night market food in Taipei ever. Like out of all the food we ate, I like this the best. Yeah. And then obsessed with the lala from the first day, I ordered another lala, but this time we ordered the San Pei lala. But I think to me the sauce kind of overpowers the taste of the lala. Random stores. And then we ordered this Qin Chao Tea, which at first I thought was Qin Chao Tea, but it turned out to be a kind of Taiwanese uh, herbal drink, and it was really good. And this is where we stumbled upon our claw machine store, foreshadowing to our upcoming claw machine addiction. So the pros for Shilin for me is that if you are into the activities and the games of night markets, you definitely have to visit Shilin because there's so many game stores. Because there is multiple of each stores and the competition is so high, you actually get a better experience and the shopkeepers actually take the time to make the games fun and an enjoyable experience for you. The big benefit about this place is that you can go outside for the traditional night market vibes and if it does start raining like it was with ours, you can actually go to the indoor one and still enjoy a night market experience experience while being sheltered from the rain. However, the cons is that it's out of the way. We had to take an Uber to Shiling. Another cons is that if you don't really enjoy the games part of the night market, I think there's nothing much to see here because I think the main attraction would be the games lah. If you want food, I think there are other night markets with better food choices. So next on day 5, we went to Lingjiang Street Night Market which is also called Tonghua Ye Shi. This is like one of the low-key smaller night market and we heard that this is like a local's favourite so we went there to take a look. The first thing we reached there, we ordered this mango salad and it was so good, we actually went back to buy another pack to bring back to the hotel. And the only regret we had was that we didn't eat another pack at the night market. <laughs> P.S. it's not as good when it's in the hotel. We ate this fried dumpling which I've been craving for a while and it was not too bad. We had this like la cha, he insisted on the chocolate milk tea which... He didn't insist on the chocolate milk tea. He did! You want chocolate milk tea because he likes chocolate? Yeah. Then here is the best food of this night market which my local friend recommended. It's like this Ping Huo Tang Yuan Bing Su. So it's strawberry seasons and the strawberries are really fresh. And Tang Yuan sounds like damn weird to add into a Bing Su but actually it's quite nice. And of course I had to check out the shooty game here. And there's only one store here. However, I think it's the best value out of everything I've tried in Taipei. So you get the most shots for the same amount of price. But the prices are not nice. Yeah. Seeing me like the prices and there's only one store here. And this is where the claw machine addiction starts. <laughs> so we went to this claw machine store and look at that, there's so many different types of food toys here. And we decided to win a KFC for our neighbor Zach. I'm gonna try with one first. KFC chicken for Zach. 
<laughs> so the cool thing about this Taiwanese claw machine which I don't really see in Singapore is that there's a guarantee win after a certain amount and then it's actually written on the machine itself so you can see how much more money you need to get the unlimited free play until you get the prize. So we went on a hunt for a machine that is quite close to the winning value so you can actually get the toys at a cheaper price and it brought us so much joy on the remaining of our trip. <gasps> So the pros of this night market is that it is in the heart of the city so it's very convenient So it's actually very close to Taipei 101 You can take like a 10 minutes plus walk over And I think the food is not too bad You get a more local experience which I really enjoy yeah, So I think the cons for Lingjiang is that there's a lot less like stores compared to the other night market So if you want that dense night market action, Lingjiang is not really the place to go Yeah and day 6 we went to Simenting night market which is actually beside the shopping district So it's kind of like an integrator night market thing where there's like short fronts at the side and then there's actually the street stores in the middle so it's a very interesting mix of like traditional street market stores and also proper shop fronts. And our top favourite food here includes the cha tan, which I ate last time in Taiwan. So I was really craving it and it actually turned out to be not too bad. And then there's this chiu ba kao chuan which looks damn good. So we decided to order one to try. So for this one, you have to wait a while. I think it was about 15 minutes because she cooks it on the spot. But when she's done, it really pays off. It's really fragrant and it's really nice and soft. And riding off the high of this success, we bought another Kaochuan, thinking all the Kaochuans will be good. Oh, it hurt. But it didn't turn out according to plan. So then we ate this like mini onion pancake which he wanted to try. I think it was okay. And we tried this like meat egg burger which was a bit sus. It's quite nice but on hindsight not really. I think it's a really unique item to try because I've never seen something like this before but it wasn't the top of our food list. I think the pros of this night market is that the food is good if you eat the correct stores. But anyway, it is quite convenient because it's at a touristy area. So if you are at Simante, you can just give this night market a visit if it's open. And the con is that it doesn't really feel like a night market. It's just kind of like stores in the middle of this area. So in summary, if you like games, go to Shilin Night Market. If you like food, you can go to Rao He. If you like crowds, go to Ningxia. If you like the local experience like a more slow paced and chill night market, you can go to Lingjiang Street Night Market. And if you like shopping, you can go to Singmenting. Yeah, so we have finally edited the hardest part of our trip because we had so many footages and it was a pain to edit it and we both fell sick for like two weeks because flu season. So yeah, hopefully our next vlog will be updated faster and remember to like and subscribe and see you! See you. Bye! Bye.